This video will show you how to implement a two-sample test for means in R. The basic idea of the two-sample test is that you have two identifiable groups and you would like to make a determination of equivalency or difference uh, across those two groups in a larger population. Uh, and the way that we're going to approach this test is using a two-stage approach. So first we're going to test formally the equality of variance assumptions, which is one of the important things uh, that you need to assume for this test. And then second, based on the result for the equality of variance test, we're going to, we're going to implement the test of means itself. So let's get going. Uh, we're going to be working with the 2016 wave of the general social survey, just like always here. And there we go. So I've just loaded it. The two variables that we're going to be working with are age kid born, which uh, is the age that the respondent's first child was born. So how old was the respondent when they had their first kid? And then second, the sex. So we're basically going to be testing whether or not men and women are the same or different at their average age where their first child was born. So the first thing that we'll do then is just check our variables. Uh, so GSS dollar sign age kid born. That's the first one. So you can see that we range between 12 years old all the way up through 47 in the general social survey. And then we'll also check sex. So GSS dollar sign sex. And it's worth noting here that we need to make sure that our level of measurement is correct. So for age kid born, this has to have a numeric class and you can check that if you want. So you can just do class GSS dollar sign age kid born and that'll return numeric. If it returns uh, something like factor or character, this test will not work and you need to either um, update your test to something more appropriate or change the class of the variable if it's just not coded by R correctly. From there, uh, we're going to start by doing the test for the equality of uh, variances, uh, which we will then use in our uh, larger test of means. So the first thing that we're going to do is just type var.test open up some parentheses and um, there are basically two different ways that you can set this up but I'm going to do it like this you you would first type the name of the first variable age kdbrn um, as it's named in the GSS and then use a tilde given uh, which is on the top left usually of your keyboard mine is right below my escape key and then I will type sex and then um, so those are the two variables we're trying to test and compare the variance of age kid born by sex. And then the next thing that we need to do is add an optional argument that says data equals GSS, uh, which just tells R that inside that data frame, GSS, it's going to find a column named age kid born and another column called sex. Uh, we don't have to do it this way. If you would rather use a dollar sign indexing, you can do that too, just like this GSS dollar sign age kid born given. GSS dollar sign sex, you'll get exactly the same result. Uh, I tend to prefer just using the optional argument uh, data equals GSS just because it's fewer keystrokes, especially when we start getting into things like regression analysis where we have a bunch of variables. Anyway, once you've got that, you can just highlight and run it and you can see that it's going to be um, performing an F test uh, of two variances. And this is the F statistic that it returns. Then we have our degrees of freedom within, degrees of freedom between, and so on. And um, what we really often just look at here is the p-value. And so if this p-value is greater than the alpha that you've specified, uh, in most of the social sciences, this will typically be 0 0.05 or something like that. Um, so if p is greater than alpha, then you can assume that the two variances are statistically equivalent to one another. Alternatively, if your p-value is less than your alpha value, so uh, you know, let's say that we had a p-value of 0 0.01175, then you would actually conclude that there is a statistically significant difference in the variances, and so you would need to adjust your two-sample test for that. Um, but in this case, it seems like the assumption is reasonable, so we can use that information in our test. From there, uh, once we have that information, we can go and conduct the test itself. And in fact, what I'm going to do is just copy and paste this code over because I only need to do a tiny little change to it. I'm going to move from their test to t.test. And if you've been following along this tutorial series, you'll see that this is actually just the same command as we used for the one sample test of means. Um, and in fact, that's actually a pretty helpful feature because 
The command is built so that it's flexible enough that you can use it for the one sample test or the two sample test as long as you feed it the correct information in the correct way. And so here, it's just age kid born given sex, again, data equals GSS, so we're still gonna keep that. Um, but then the other thing that we need to do is explicitly note what we want to do with this variance equality assumptions. And, and so the way that you set that up in R is var.equal as an optional argument, and then this um, inside that you will put either a logical true or a logical far, false. And in this case, we're going to put true because our p-value was greater than our alpha value. If your p-value was less than or equal to your alpha value, then you would put false instead. But since it's true here, I'll just do that. And once you run that, you will get the results of your statistical test. And so you can see that we get a t-score of 9.6111. Um, and since this is large enough of a sample, we could actually call that a z-score if we wanted to. And that has a p-value that's very small of 2.2 .2 raised to the negative 16th power. Um, so very, very, very small relative to most of the um, alpha values that we would work with in the social sciences, like 0.05 or 0.01 or something like that. This part of the test here tells you whether it's two-tailed or one-tailed, and so you can see that we have not equal, which is um, ambiguous in directionality, so this is a two-tailed test. That's the default in R. This right here uh, is a confidence interval of the difference, and so you can see that uh, the confidence interval around that is around 1.98 years all the way through to around three years after rounding. And then R also gives you um, the basic estimates of means for each of your groups. So if you look at this, you can basically just see that men tend to be two and a half years older, more or less, um, when they have their first child relative to women. And so really that's all that you need to do in order to uh, run these tests. Let me just show you a couple of other things that I sometimes find helpful doing these in practice. Um, so I'm gonna just copy and paste what's on line 11 and modify it a little bit. The first thing that I tend to do is create a specific object for my tests. Just, I think it's just handy to have them in case I need to, to refer to them later. So I would call this kid test or something like that, gets the result of the test. And now if I run what's on 13, you'll see that the test shows up in my global environment. And then if I ever want to refer back to it or look at it for the first time, you just type the name of the object and you'll see that I get it exactly the same um, as I did up there except now I've just saved it uh, for later. The other thing that's worth uh, noting here is that we've assumed that uh, a two-tailed test is appropriate, but that's not always going to be the case depending on the research problem that you're working on. And um, so just like for the one sample version of this, we can easily change uh, moving from a two-tailed test to a one-tailed test on either side of the t-distribution just um, using the alternative command uh, as an optional argument. So I'm gonna just put a comma in there and then uh, a new line, which I can do since my parentheses are still uh, open, and then type alternative equals, and then the default in R is two dot sided, and that will just give you the two-tailed test, but you could also do less if you believed that the population mean for group one was less than the population mean for group two, or alternatively, you could just do greater, uh, which would mean that the population mean for group one is greater than the population mean for group two. Um, whichever way you wanted to do it is totally contingent on the test, but for us, um, two dot sided makes good sense here. Uh, and so if you wanted to just run it like this, you'll get exactly the same result again, because it's still um, just setting it up as a two-tailed test. If I put less and ran that, you can see that it's now showing up as less and, and all that. Um, so really that's all that you need to run these tests. Uh, there's more in the help file uh, that is worth looking through if uh, you're running into trouble as you run this. But otherwise, um, it should be pretty straightforward.